This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to create moves on still images. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create an effect that looks almost 3D using Final Cut Pro 10. This next technique is something I was exploring when I was doing live directing about, oh, 30, 40 years ago. I was asked to do an animated children's program, but we didn't have an animation stand. We didn't have cell animation. All we had were studio cameras. So I invented this concept using chroma key and two different cameras to give us a piece of still flat art, an illusion of depth. Now it's a whole lot easier. And well, watch this. Let me show you how we can create a 3D move in depth. Right, now we could do this inside Premiere or we could do it inside Final Cut. I'm already in Final Cut, so we'll do it here. But before I show you how it works, let's switch over to Photoshop. This is a picture of my son when he was much, <laughs> much, much younger. But I specifically chose it because of two key characteristics that make this effect work. One, I've got a clear difference between the foreground and the background. Notice that the foreground is in focus and nice and bright. The background is in soft focus and there's nothing that's like a mid-ground that could be confusing between the two. And it's really easy for me to see the edges between the foreground and the background. What I did is I've cut him out using the magnetic lasso. I just cut him out of the image. So I have a layer which is just the foreground image. Then I have a layer which is the background image. Now using the clone tool, I have filled in edges of the background so that I've, I've purposely filled the hole that I cut by lifting him out into a separate layer. And the reason is if you don't and you zoom in, I'm going to see his ear in the background and I'm going to see his ear as I zoom on the foreground and it's going to look really weird. You cannot simply cut the foreground. You've got to fill in the background around the edges so that you sort of invent background. So when you superimpose the two, the shot looks normal, but there's not a duplication of the foreground in the background. Notice that I've got three layers here. We'll just hide those. Let's go back to Final Cut. And let's bring him in. There's our image. Notice that this is a layered Photoshop graphic. I've got that stacked icon in the top left corner. And in real life, I would pick an image which is 16 by 9. This is clearly a vertical image. I'd have to composite it against the background or get something different. But because this works so well to illustrate the technique, even though it's the wrong aspect ratio, I'm going to use it. Clear difference between foreground and background clear edge that I can use the magnetic lasso to pull this out. And now we'll just double click it. If I were to edit this down to the timeline, it would edit as a single layer clip. By double clicking the Photoshop, I'm able to see all the different layers and work with each of the layers individually. So let's just do exactly that. Let me just move one frame forward. What I want to do is to create a move which gives me the illusion of depth. First thing I'm going to do is we'll just turn him off for a second, type the letter V. I'm now working just with the background layer. Go to the effects window, go to blur, grab a Gaussian blur, drag a Gaussian blur on the back, and it goes blurry, which is what you'd expect. But I want to have the blur change over time. You'll see the reason why in a second. So select the clip, put the playhead at the beginning of the clip, and set a keyframe for the Gaussian blur amount. And we could set it to any number we want. I'm going to use zero. I might sometimes use two or three, so there's a slight blur there. But this is already blurry, so I don't need to have it be more than that. And oops, I've got to change this before I get carried away. It imported it as a one minute clip. That would take too long for us to look at. I'm going to change the duration. Control D as in duration. And now it's a 10 second clip. So I've got the blur starting here. And around seven and a half seconds in, I'm going to have the blur end. So right there. Make sure the clip is selected. Click a keyframe and we'll set a value of about 50. So now we see the background blurring as we drag through it. Okay. Now let's go to our foreground. Turn this off. Go to the foreground. And we'll go to the very beginning. And what I want to do is I want to do a slight zoom in on him. So with this clip selected, we'll set a keyframe for scale. 
And we'll leave that set to 100. What? Wait, wait, wait. Leave that set to 100% because I forgot to set this before. None. Okay, good. And then we'll put this to 730. And we'll zoom in, oh, right about there. Okay. So now as we look at this, we see ourselves zooming in. Now it's a little bit choppy because it hasn't been rendered, but clearly a nice zoom in is occurring. Now let's turn our background on, the letter V, and now watch the two of them together. And notice that as we zoom in, the background is going more and more out of focus, giving us the illusion that it's all right, but the background isn't moving and the foreground is. It'd be nice if we had the background move as well, so let's do another thing. Select our background image, go down to Transform, set a keyframe for scale, go to where the zoom ends, but have it not scale by quite the same amount. So now we're going to have the foreground zoom and the background zoom, but they're going to zoom at different rates, which fools the eye into thinking it's looking at a 3D effect. Well, let's do one more thing, which makes this really a, a way to sell this. Select our clip. Set a keyframe for position and move to 730 and grab the horizontal position and just move the tree so the tree goes just a little bit over to his camera left, right about there. Negative, whoops, negative 110. Now let's watch this one more time. Look at that. What we're doing is because the background is zooming in, but not as fast as the foreground, and it's moving slightly, it looks like the camera itself is moving in real space to take what's a still image. All we did is extract a layer from it, takes a still image, and gives it a sense of three-dimensional depth. What I'm going to do now is, just so we can see this over the Internet, it's going to be hard to see because the uh, frame rate playback uh, and the live event is slow. But when you download this or when you watch this on the subscription service, it'll play back with the correct frame rate. And I want you to see what this looks like when it's all smoothed out. So we'll take just a second to let this process, but this is just way cool. Okay, let's just take a look at this. Is that not cool? Let's try it again. Not hard. Takes a little bit of time. Took me about, oh, 10 minutes to do the outline in Photoshop. And took us, what, 10 minutes here to set the effect. So you wouldn't want to do this for thousands of images. But when you've got a money shot that you really want to have people pay attention to, this is a tremendous effect. This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to create still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 135. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 800 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. And thanks.